Let's say you want to go full time as a Poshmark reseller and you want to know how the heck can I, what kind of business do I need to make $60,000? I want to be a reseller full time. I want to quit my job and I want to pay myself $60,000 out of my reselling business. What does that look like? What do I need to do? Today's video is for you. Download your free reseller resource guide today. I constantly update and share with you discounts, favorites, tools, and resources to help you with your reselling business. After the video, click the link in the description and get your totally free guide today. I'm gonna go through with you the reseller math, full-time reseller. I did last week, part-time reseller. So if you wanna be a part-time reseller, you wanna make more money as a part-time reseller, check out that last video. This is how to be a full-time reseller and so the numbers are a little different so if you want to be a full-time reseller this is what we're doing we're trying to make sixty thousand dollars now it does start with knowing your current numbers because there's certain things that we need to plug in i'm going to make some assumptions here but you need to plug in numbers that are specific for you so you need to know your listing number how many items do you list every day or every month your selling number how many items do you sell every day or every month your sell through rate. So what percentage of the items that you listed have sold? The ASP, what is your earnings or your sales price, your average sales price? How many you sold divided into how much you made sales wise? Your average cost of goods. So what is your average buy cost? Is it, you know, $5, $3, whatever. Overhead costs, all those other costs that aren't related to the actual items that you buy. So equipment and supplies and all of those things for the month, not for, you know, forever. So let's say that you have a sell through rate of 50%. You have an average sales price of $35. Your average cost of goods is $5 and your overhead is about $775 a month. Now we'll get into it very specifically. These are again, just some assumptions. So you would need to list 900 items per month or 30 per day in order to make all of this work. Let's keep going down the road. So you're listing 900 a month. You have a 50% sell through rate. Therefore, you're selling 450 items per month. You have an average sales price of $35 times 450 items that you sold that's gonna give you revenue or sales of $15,750. It's an amazing month, it's a great month. So what are your earnings from this after Poshmark fees? I'm rounding it to 30% because we all do different things with our business. Some people offer the $2 shipping discount, some offer the higher shipping discount, some offer free shipping on things that sell on offers. Some things sell with the 295 fee, some things sell with the 20% fee. So I'm averaging and probably overestimating at 30% for fees, just to be on the safe side. So if you take 30% of the 15,750, you're left with $11,025. So that's how much Poshmark is gonna deposit into your bank account in a month, okay? If your average cost of goods is $5, and you sold 450 items, that average cost of goods or your COGS for the month is gonna be $2,250. So we're gonna subtract that from our earnings and that's gonna leave us with $8,775. So we got our money from Poshmark, we took out the money that we paid for the items and that's how much we're left with. Now we need to subtract out our overhead. So this is the supplies, the equipment, the monthly subscriptions and services and automations. This is any helpers that you have. These are all the expenses that you have every month as part of your overhead to run your business. So it's not your thrifting budget. It's not your, your cost of goods. It's all those other fees. So I estimated that for a full-time seller at 775. I think that that is a good average. It may be higher for some people. It might be lower for some people. Mine is higher because I do have a storage unit. I pay helpers. I have lots of other things that affect my business. So that's not my monthly nut, 
but I do think that it's probably pretty accurate for a good group of people and then you can kind of vary it for yourself. So if we take out the 775, we're actually left with an even number of $8,000. So your profit is $8,000, but that's not what you pay yourself, right? Because we have to do some other things, namely pay taxes. Now, typically I don't get into taxes because I'm not a CPA, but for this example, we need to account for it. So I'm gonna do a general number. This is for education purposes only. This is for this example only, and I am not giving you tax advice. You need to consult with your CPA because your state is different, your individual situation is different, your family situation is different. There are so many things that factor in, so this is an example. Don't forget to stop by the Rebecca the Reseller Academy where you can find all of the products and all of the educational tools I have available for you, including all the free goodies. Here you can find coaching calls, Poshmark closet reviews, digital downloads, including my free reseller resource guide, as well as all of my courses and all of the bundles to save you lots of money. Hope you'll stop by soon at the Rebecca the Reseller Academy. Okay, so if you take 20% of earnings, so not 20% of profit, because technically you earned from Poshmark $11,025 then you subtracted your cost of goods, then you subtracted your expenses. And yes, usually you're only paying taxes on the number below, but I believe that you should overestimate your taxes. And if you have money left over, then you get to pay yourself a bonus. That's how I do it. So I feel like you always want to make sure that you have enough money in that little tax fund that you're saving so that you're covered and that there are no surprises and there's no giant tax bill come April. So I'm saying to do 20%, again, example, 20% of your earnings, which is $11,025, that puts you at $2,205 that goes in your tax fund from this month, hypothetically speaking, which leaves you with $5,795. So that is how much is available at the end after taking care of all of the things. Now, you could pay yourself that amount. But my recommendation as a full-time seller is that you have what I call a business fund. It is where you put a portion of your profits for a rainy day. It's not your personal savings three to six month emergency fund. It is your business three to six months emergency fund. It is the what if everything comes to a screeching halt fund. It is the what if you were able to snag a big buy of a pallet at a crazy, amazing deal. Now you have money in your business where you can pounce on that deal. Or what if you have helpers to help you and you had really slow sales and so you need to be able to pay your staff. What if you had slow sales and you wanna be able to pay yourself and now you can pull from this little pool of money. So I believe that if you are a full-time seller, you need to have these safeguards in place. And so I would recommend that you take $795 and put it in your profit fund. Put it in your business fund and leave it there until you need it. And if it gets to a point where it's so much, you know, then you can take some out. But I like to have in my business about $10,000 safety net because that can get me through a couple months of paying people that can get me through a big buy if I want to pounce on a deal. That can get me through, you know, taking on a second storage unit if I need to because I bought something crazy and I have a million things coming. So there's just lots of reasons why I might need that. Most of the time I don't, but I know it's there and it makes me feel good and it makes me feel less stressed. So I recommend doing that. You don't have to, then you'd make a little bit more money. But so if you put the 795 in your business fund, you would end up with $5,000 for that month to pay yourself a salary. And if you take that $5,000 and multiply that by 12 months in a year, you now have $60,000 that you paid yourself. So that's the reseller math for a full-time seller. It's not the only way, it's a way. It's an example based on very specific parameters to give you an idea. If you plug in your numbers, you will get potentially different results. And it could be in your favor or it might be worse. It might tell you 
that your numbers say you can't be a full-time reseller right now. Or your numbers might say, hey, actually, you could do this. It's very possible. If you are considering being a full-time Poshmark reseller, my next video that I'm going to do is going to be all about can you actually do it? Can you replace your job with Poshmark? So this was all about the math, but the next one is going to be like, should you, could you, what to consider, what to do kind of thing. And I think that might be really helpful for you as well if you're considering being a full-time reseller on Poshmark. Thanks. I hope you'll subscribe for that next video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.